We're starting the year with one of the comfortiest, com com comfiest, coziest comfort foods. It is chicken pot pie casserole. You guys are gonna love this recipe. Check this out. Everybody, it's Natasha of Natasha'sKitchen.com. Today we are making chicken pot pie casserole. I told you it's as good as it looks, and I am totally craving this. Also, it uses rotisserie chicken, and it's just a really easy, comforting dinner that the whole family will love. And I am so hungry, so let's get started. Also, we're playing a game. Let me know where you spot Sharky in the video. We've got him hidden pretty well. And if you haven't already, make sure you click below to subscribe. And when you do, hit that little bell icon so you'll get notifications every time we post a new recipe. Let's do this. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and butter a nine by 12 casserole dish. I will leave a link to this in the notes. Now we're gonna prep all of our veggies. Peel and slice two medium carrots. That should be about one cup of thinly sliced carrot. Now finely chop one medium onion. You should have about one to one and a half cups of chopped onion. Whoa, tell me, what is it good for chopping up my onion? No, is it action? And if you haven't already, make sure you watch our tutorial on how to chop an onion the right way. Next, thinly slice eight ounces of brown or white mushrooms. I love how much flavor the mushrooms add to a chicken pot pie, so do not skip them. And last but not least, peel and finely mince three garlic cloves. You should have about a tablespoon minced. Now it's time to hit the stove. Place a Dutch oven or a heavy pot over medium heat and melt in six tablespoons of unsalted butter. Add onions and carrots and saute for about eight minutes or until they're softened. Add the mushrooms and garlic. And saute another five minutes or until the mushrooms are softened. Now add flour and stir constantly for one and a half to two minutes. Add your chicken stock and a little bit of heavy whipping cream and bring it to a simmer. Once that's simmering, continue stirring for another minute or until the mixture is a thick gravy consistency. Stir in your salt and freshly cracked black pepper. Stir to combine, then add shredded chicken, some frozen peas, and there's no need to thaw, just add them frozen, and one fourth cup of finely chopped parsley. Stir that to combine, then cover to keep it warm while you make your biscuits. The biscuits are even easier. In a large mixing bowl, combine your flour, baking powder, and salt, and whisk that together. Now I have some diced cold butter that I've been keeping in the fridge, and you wanna make sure to keep it cold until you're using it. Add that to your flour mixture. Use a pastry blender to cut the butter into the flour until the largest butter pieces are pea-sized. Add your half and half all at once and mix that into the flour. Mix that just until the flour is moistened and it comes together. Make sure you don't over mix. Turn the dough onto a generously floured surface and if it's too sticky to handle, you can sprinkle on a little bit of flour over the top. Pat that into a rectangle and fold the dough in half. Pat it into another rectangle and fold the dough in half again. This helps create those flaky layers. Finally, pat the dough into a five by 10 rectangle and use a two and a half inch round biscuit cutter to cut out eight biscuits. Now with biscuits, this is key. Make sure you dip the cutter into flour, then push straight down into the dough. Do not twist your cutter as you're pushing it down. This ensures your biscuits puff up beautifully. Once you're done cutting your biscuits, you can pull together your scraps and cut out another two or three biscuits. You should have a total of 10 biscuits if you're repurposing scraps. Now it's time to put this chicken pot pie casserole together. Transfer your prepared filling into the buttered casserole dish. Now spread that evenly into the pan. And finally, we're gonna top with our homemade biscuits. Arrange those semi-evenly and it's okay if some of them are touching. It actually helps the biscuits to rise even taller. Now bake for 25 to 28 minutes. When it's done, the filling will be hot and bubbly and your biscuits will be tall and golden brown on top. 
I am excited. Also very hungry and this smells so good. Once the biscuits come out of the oven and notice how tall they've risen. They are super puffy, fluffy, and they are fluffy all the way through. That's the amazing thing about this. I'll show you in a minute when we do the taste test. They don't get soggy. Once they come out of the oven, you do wanna brush them with some melted butter and that kind of gives them a nice shininess. You don't have to, but you know, you got this far. Brush the biscuit. That almost sounds inappropriate. It's not. We run a family friendly channel here. Butter your biscuits. That's even worse. Okay, all right people, calm down. It's just biscuits and butter. Can you tell I'm excited? Look how beautiful and inviting that is now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you wanna let it cool a little bit. We're not that patient, so we're gonna just dig right into this. I like to serve it with a big spoon so that you can scoop up the filling and the biscuit in one swoop. Check this out. Your mouth is guaranteed to water. Ready, ready? Here we go. Oh, yes. <laughs> Look at how creamy and saucy that is and just perfect, totally loaded. And these biscuits are just like a mile high. <laughs> oh, let's get a little bit extra filling here. And this tastes just like chicken pot pie because the filling is basically the same, but the biscuits, I'm telling you, it's such a treat. Let's dig into this. Look at that. Look how soft and tender these biscuits are. So airy and flaky and wonderful. Let's get a big scoop. And look at the center here. I'm telling you, this is moist all the way through. I love that this doesn't get soggy. <laughs> it's so good. Okay, ooh, that's a big bite. I'm just gonna dig right into this. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Fail. <laughs> This is supremely satisfying. So much chicken in there, and the chicken is so tender. I love that you can use leftover rotisserie chicken. It just gets so soft and juicy inside that sauce, and it never tastes like leftovers. So it's actually a really smart way to repurpose leftover chicken. And I mean, you can make this with store-bought frozen biscuit dough, but do yourself a favor and make the homemade version. You'll never go back because they're so good and they're really super easy. And I love that it's also loaded with veggies. It really is a meal in one dish. All right, I'm gonna go enjoy this and we'll see you in the next episode of Natasha's Kitchen. Let me know also where you spotted Sharky. I'd love to know, bye.